Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems Advanced Technologies Board in Europe. I get a lot of customers that are now trying shared storage pools and are a bit nervous about getting started. Once you get the concepts of a cluster of VIO servers operating on one set of disks, it's very easy to actually operate a shared storage pool. In fact, three commands in three minutes and you have your pool actually up and running and you can just give it a go. It really is this simple. First of all, though, we have to update our virtual I.O. server. I always encourage people to do this anyway for security and fixes. When I made this movie, the latest release was 2.2.3.3 and a couple of fixes. Most people run with dual VO servers, and the point of having two is that it makes upgrading them easy. You can do this online with your applications up. Don't use older versions of the VO server than 2.2.3, because with this release, we first had the pool mirroring feature. This means the pool can be put on one disk subsystem and it's completely mirrored to a different disk subsystem. That gives us protection from uh, LUN failures or complete disk subsystem failures or the connection to the disk subsystem. When we recover the situation the disk comes back up, the shared storage pool software running on the VO server will automatically resilver those disks and catch them back up. You don't have to do anything. As a side effect, you don't have to now mirror at the virtual machine or LPAR level as it's done by the shared storage pool. This means when you have failures, you don't have to log on to a couple of hundred virtual machines and run resilvering commands to get the disk back up to date. The VO servers will do that completely automatically for you. We really need to keep our virtual machines as simple as possible to reduce manpower. In my configuration then, I have two machines here with dual VO servers, they're called machines C and D. I also have two disk units at the back, disk A and B, and we're going to join those up now. I'm going to ask my disk admin team to create me a couple of LUNs, um, perhaps two on each disk unit. How big should they be? Well, it depends. We use 128 gigabytes. If you're going to very big pools, then perhaps they're a little bit on the small side, but maybe 256, 512 gigabytes each, something like that. We also need one special one called a repository. Um, people get worried about their size. I just make them one gig. That will be enough space for the first 10 years of operating my shared storage pool, so I don't have to worry about it beyond that. We're then going to ask the SAN guys to zone up all of those LUNs, including the repository, to all the VO servers. And they'll say, hang about, are you sure? Because you're used to uh, zoning up a LUN to one particular virtual I.O. server or MPIV to one particular client. But no, we really do want all those LUNs onto all those virtual I.O. servers at the same time. And the virtual I.O. servers will operate the cluster to make sure they don't write to the same bit of disk at the same time. So here they are, here's the three commands. The first one in here, then we go to any of the VO servers. In this example, I'm using the C1 virtual I.O. server. And I run cluster, create cluster name, not a very inspiring name here, cluster one. A pool name, pool one. We can only have one cluster and one pool in a VO server. Then we're going to tell it about these storage pool physical volumes in here so the two h disks of course you'll have to put the numbers of the h disks in here for your luns then we're going to give it the special uh, lun the small one for the repository physical volume and we're going to give it our own host name of our actual current vio server you'll have to again change those to suit your configurations that will take about a minute. It will go around, check all those disks that it can get, see them OK, and it will build the cluster and uh, populate the repository disk. Then we're going to run this cluster add node. We give it the same cluster uh, details, and then we give it the host name of the next VO server we want to include. In this case, we'll actually have to run this command three times for the other three virtual I.O. servers. Again, these will take 30 seconds to a minute, perhaps. It will check those disks are available on those VO servers and then bring it into the cluster. Finally, the command down here, the failure group, this gives us the mirror so that one set of disks could fail and we can recover and carry on running. So we're going to use the failure group create. This is the failure group name. So we're going to call it unit B. This is give us the second set of uh, LUNs on the second disk unit. We're going to give it the HDIS numbers for the, the extra LUNs. 
And the next one, just as can be tidying up in here, is we might want to modify the failure group. We have the default that was created in the cluster create command. Just for cleanness, we'll actually give it a new name called unit A. So we'll have two failure groups called unit A and unit B that map onto the disk units that we're actually using to support our LUNs. That's it. The failure group command will run in the background, creating the mirrors for us. In this case, we haven't used much, so there's not actually much for it to actually mirror. When we create logical units, our virtual disk from then on, they'll be automatically mirrored at the back end for us. And that's it. This is probably less than three minutes work to actually get our first shared storage pool cluster up and running and safe to operate. So we've created two things in here, a cluster of virtual I.O. servers, we call that cluster one, and we created the shared storage pool called pool one at the back end in here. We're now ready to create virtual machines and create the virtual disks for them. We could allocate and assign disks in a couple of ways. On the VO server one command line, we say logical unit create, give it a size, 64 gigs, give it a name. It's good to relate this somehow to the logical partition name so you know whose disk this is. And then we give the standard virtual SCSI V adapter name. Again, you'll have to work that out for your particular virtual machine. On the second VO server of this pair, we use the LU map. We don't want to create another piece of disk. We already created the disk. So the map command says, go and find this one and connect this, the second connection to the second VO server. Or if that's too much work, I mean, really, we shouldn't be logging onto our VO servers that much. We can actually use the HMC, the graphical user interface. We can drill into the virtual storage management. And then we have no touching the VO server. We can create a piece of virtual disk, give it a size, give it a name, we can tell it which virtual machine we want it to connect to, it will go and find all the VO servers that could be used, the, the one or two in our simple case here, and we do one click and it will do all those commands for us in the background automatically in, in three or four seconds. Then there's a bunch of other commands you may want to uh, have a look at for some finer details, but uh, that's it to get your actual shared storage pool up and running. We'll cover these in more detail in a second movie. This movie is going to be about seven minutes long. You could have created two shared storage pools by now instead of watching this. Go on, give it a go. If you like this movie, click like below.